So Vic, um, Star Trek is just one of your interests. I understand you also do some voice acting, and not just that. Okay. But apparently, <laughs> apparently you're quite the voice actor. Um, give me a quick rundown of like some things that you've done that uh, that my three audience members may or may not be familiar with. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> um, uh, I, I've been voice acting in animation and video games for probably 13 or 14 years now. Yeah. I've done over 200 different series and video mm -hmm. games. Some of the more well-known ones are uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, who do you play in Full Metal Alchemist? I play the Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> oh, you mean the guy? I that's play the, the, little, the little pipsqueak himself. Okay. Yes, <laughs> Edward Elric. Okay. And, uh, and then I, I play characters in Dragon Ball Z and Naruto and Bleach and uh, Kakaishi and... Uh, Pokemon and hmm. uh, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and all kinds. Of, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. What about Chobits? Are you in Chobits? I'm not in Chobits. Okay, sorry, to say that's my favorite. He's gonna kick me. Out. <laughs> so like, this interview's over. <laughs> no Chobits, no interview. Out. So I only humored you with the Star Trek <laughs> stuff because I really want to talk about Chobits. But if you got nothing to say about Chobits, <laughs> so um, so I guess a question on my mind, which I'm sure is on my three viewers' mind is how does one sort of get to be at uh, what I perceive to be the top of the game? Like, how do you, how does one do that? Did you just sort of send a resume in, or did you, uh, like, what, what was you the know, process? Well, you know, my through? experience was very different than it would be today. Okay. When I was, uh, like, uh, like I said, 13 or 14 years ago, um, I was working on a video production with a guy in Houston, mm -hmm. and he said, hey, you, uh, you've got a lot of acting experience, don't you? I said, yeah done a lot of theater, mm -hmm. some on-camera stuff. And he said, you ought to go on audition for this place in town. They, they buy these Japanese cartoons, and they need actors. They, they dub them in English, and they're mm -hmm. looking for actors. And I thought, wow, that sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. So I went and uh, auditioned. And this is fun and food and No, 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 oh. no, it's not, actually. This was ADV Films in okay. Houston, oh, sure, which does yeah. no longer exist. They did all the Farscape DVDs. Yes, okay. they sure did. But um, at the time, they were mm -hmm. very little little studio made up of a few guys that loved this stuff and, mm -hmm. and had a passion for doing it. So I went in and I auditioned and I got cast. And okay. kept doing it. Just the next show came up and the next show and the next show and the next show. And the next thing I knew, I was meeting people from studios in Dallas, like Funimation. Mm okay. And started working at Funimation. And then the next thing you know, I started getting invited to conventions. I didn't Whoa. even know they had conventions. Whoa, you mean an anime guy? Yeah, I didn't even know. I mean, when I was a little kid, I went to Star Trek conventions, right. but I didn't even know there were anime conventions. Right. So I started going to those, and then I started meeting other people in the business, people from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. people from New York, mm -hmm. and uh, just kept working. Mm -hmm. uh, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that it, that anything would have ever come of it. I would have never imagined hmm. that it would uh, that it would have blown up into what it has become now and that I'd, I'd be so blessed mm -hmm. to, to be, to be uh, so involved in this industry. Cool. Well, tell me from, from all of that, like where you are today in your career with voiceover work, what's, what's, the, um, what's the most interesting experience that has resulted directly from your work <clears throat> in that field? Well, I, I would say that I owe most of the opportunities that I have now from the work that I've done in anime. For instance, hmm. I would never have met William Shatner. Hmm. I would certainly never be able to have called him a friend. Wait a minute. If I had not gone to conventions. How no, but I, I get invited to pop culture conventions. Oh, I see. I a see. lot of the shows that I do are on television. So when these pop culture, these multi-genre conventions want to have guests, they're like, okay, we need some, we need people from sci-fi, we need people that appeal to the comic book crowd, we need people that appeal to the anime crowd. Bing. So they invite me, and I get to go and hang out with Christopher Lloyd from Back to the hmm. Future, or uh, Richard Hatch from Battlestar Galactica, hmm. or Stan Lee, or uh, the list goes on. Yeah. Serenity, Firefly, yeah. Star Wars. I was signing autographs this past weekend, sitting next to Darth Vader for Christmas. What? And, uh, and, of course, William Shatner. Right. Um, George T.K., Leonard Nimoy, Kate Mulgrew. But pretty much everyone. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. so I mean I, I've I've gotten to do things as a as a sci-fi 
nerd mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. as a fan of so many of these things, mm -hmm. to get the chance to be invited to events mm -hmm. as a guest of mm -hmm. honor and sit with these people who you've loved, whose work you've loved for decades, and to talk with them and interact with them as a peer, yeah. as one of the guests that's there with them, that's been a, a particular privilege. Amazing. That sounds really awesome. A byproduct of, of your of, my, of Yeah, being an animator. Yeah.